Hydrostatic pressure increases linearly with depth. The pressure as a function of depth can be written as gamma times h, and since gamma is the specific weight of the fluid, we can also write the function as rho g h. The units for the density rho are mass over volume, which can be pounds per cubic foot or kilograms per cubic meter, for example. The gravity g is an acceleration, which is distance over time squared, for example, m over second square. And since the height or depth is distance, for example, meters, we find that the pressure has units of pascals for metric or PSI for English units. The force from the liquid on a submerged surface would be the pressure times the area of contact. But since the pressure changes with depth, the force is actually the integral from the bottom to the top of the surface of the pressure times a d area. Now since the pressure is not changing in the horizontal axis and the surfaces we analyze are usually rectangular, meaning that the width is constant along the vertical axis, a reasonable representation of a 3D problem in a 2D space would be to assume the pressure on the wall as a triangular distributed load. The diagonal of this triangular load would be a straight line that goes from zero to rho g h as a straight line with a slope equal to the specific gravity. With this 2D simplification, which means multiplying by the horizontal axis dimension, which is a constant, we would get new units for the pressure, which was once force over area, as force per length, which is consistent with the units of a typical distributed load. The integral from top to bottom of the distributed load, lowercase p, times dz, would be the area under the curve of the triangle just like it normally is for any of the triangular loads we studied in the previous video. Link below to that specific section of that video. And just like any triangular load, the location of the equivalent point load with that magnitude is the centroid of the triangle, one third from the base. As opposed to the triangular loads on a beam, for example, we don't need to be given the highest value for the load density. In the case of a load on a beam, we would be given a Wx that reads something like 20 pounds per foot, and that value referred to that highest value. The area of the triangle would be one half of the base, which is the length in the x-axis, times that 20 pound per foot height. In the case of hydrostatic pressure problems, by knowing the depth or height and the type of liquid we have, we can find that highest value from the distributed load. Since the pressure is rho g h, by knowing the depth we know h and by knowing the liquid, for example water, we know rho, its density. The reason for calculating these hydrostatic pressure forces is to be able to calculate the reaction moment or forces that, for example, a gate has to generate to prevent the water from coming into the adjacent reservoir. Now the process of finding the resulting horizontal load from the fluid pressure doesn't only work for vertical surfaces in contact with a liquid reservoir. If the surface in contact with the liquid is inclined, the horizontal forces affecting the surface will be calculated in the exact same manner. The magnitude of the equivalent point load in the horizontal direction would be equal to the area of the triangle of the triangular distributed load, meaning rho g h times h divided by 2. And just like before, it's also located one-third of the way from the bottom to the top. Of course, on an inclined surface, the weight of the liquid above it, which is a vertical load, also affects the surface. In some cases, this weight will only be a triangle, or the combination of a rectangle plus a triangle, or just a trapezoid. The weight of the liquid would be the volume times the specific weight, which for a 2D representation is the area times the specific weight times the width. The location of the point load from the rectangular load is located right at the center, and again, just like with the pressure force, the location from the triangular weight is located one-third of the way from the side of the triangle. Variation of these two situations, the vertical wall and the inclined one that begins right at the surface of the liquid, is if the walls or other member of interest is submerged beyond the surface of the liquid. For example, if there's a gate at the bottom of the reservoir, and you can think of it as a valve that opens to drain a reservoir, the distributed load affecting the gate will only be the portion of the hydrostatic pressure between the bottom and the top of the gate which means the linear distributed load looks like a trapezoid. 
And again, if you don't want to deal with the centroid of a trapezoid to find the location of the equivalent point load, you can divide it into a rectangle plus a triangle. The rectangle's point load, located at the center of the gate's height, and the triangle's point load, located one-third of the height of the gate from the bottom. The value for the pressure at both the top and the bottom would just be rho g times z, where z is the depth or distance from the surface of the liquid. With these values, we could calculate the area of the rectangle as well as the area of the triangle by finding the base as the difference between the distributed pressures. For any other shape of the floor of the reservoir, for example a curved bottom, the process would be the same. The pressure on the side is creating a horizontal force and the weight of the liquid above the curve is creating a vertical load. The weight is divided into one, a rectangle above the curve, just like we did with the flat inclined wall from before, and two, the weight of the remaining geometry, which can be calculated using everything we learned during the centroid and center of gravity main video. Link below if you haven't watched that yet. The equivalent force will be the specific gravity times the volume, which in terms of the integral is the width in the third dimension we don't see, times the area, written as the integral about z, of all the d areas along the z direction. This is usually written as a function of z, known due to the geometry of the floor slash wall. The location of the equivalent load would be at the centroid of the volume, Again, link below to that portion of the video where we study center of gravity, center of mass, or centroid of the volume for a shape described by a given math function. Let's take a look at a simple example where we make use of what we've learned today. And if you want to check out more complex problems, you can check out the two minute long video examples on this topic linked in the description below. When the tide water A subsides, the tide gate automatically swings open to drain the marsh B. For this specific condition of high tide shown, what are the horizontal reactions developed at the hinge C and the stop block D? The width of the gate is 6 meters and the water density is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. Remember to try to solve this problem on your own before watching the solution in this video. A free body diagram of the tide gate would show the reactions at C and D that we're looking for plus the two hydrostatic pressure forces. The maximum hydrostatic pressure on the left, let's call it E, would be equal to rho g z with the depth C being 3 meters. The hydrostatic pressure at point D would be that for a depth of 2 meters. The force coming from the left side would be equal to the area of the purple triangle times the width of the gate. The force coming from the right side would be equal to the area of the pink rectangle times the width of the gate. The location of the purple force would be at the centroid of the left triangle, which is one-third of the height from the bottom. The location of the pink force would also be the centroid of the right triangle, which is one-third of the two-meter height from the bottom surface, assuming that the height of block D is negligible. With a simple sum of moments about C, and knowing that the gate is not rotating, we can find the value for the reaction at D. And then, with a sum of forces in x, and knowing that the gate is not translating left or right, we find the value for the reaction at c. For more complex examples on hydrostatic pressure, as well as the other main videos of the static scores, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.